David has a dual affiliation with Alberta and Minnesota at present. So he completely qualifies as an Alberta representative. Uh, and his title is Cohomological Field Theories from Gauge Linear Sigma Models. Okay, uh, thank you for that introduction and thank you to the organizers uh, for inviting me to speak. Yeah, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to make it in person. Um, you know, if you have a small robot body, maybe I can come on the hike with you guys as well. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds exciting. Um, right, so I'm going to talk about cohomological field theories uh, for GLSMs. And um, this is based on joint work with Bumshig Chem. And uh, sadly, uh, Bumshig passed away last year, so this is dedicated to uh, the memory. Of bump shape. All right, so um, let me tell you about what we did. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what are GLSMs and then what's the input data for a cohomological field theory for GLSMs, uh, say some of the results and some of the history of the results in this direction. And uh, if time permits, I'll talk about the construction of it. So uh, I should clarify, uh, what's the norm for the, uh, for the amount of time for these talks? Is it about 50 minutes or one hour? Uh, more like 50 minutes. 50 um, minutes, okay. So I will talk about these three things. <laughs> All right, most likely. All right, so uh, GLSMs. So uh, the data for a GLSM is uh, some quintuple of data here. So we have a uh, complex vector space and a group acting on it. So a subgroup of GLV, uh, which is linearly reductive. And a character of that group surjective character. And another character So that's the input data. And from that you uh, define the usual group G, which is the kernel of this character Chi and theta, uh, which is the restriction of this extra character to G. I'm going to explain roughly how to think about this in a moment. And uh, you need to require that the semi-stable locus with respect to this new character is the same as the semi-stable locus with respect to theta, which is the stable locus. So this is uh, this is this condition here is what's called a good lift of theta. Uh, this is like requiring that your stack is uh, nice to lean Mumford stack, and this uh, th this here is what, what's called a good lift. And then uh, we also require that the critical locus of oops, I forgot uh, to list W in this here. Okay, we also have W, which is an element of uh, sim C dual tensor of C chi and then G invariant. So uh, I'll explain what all of this amounts to in a moment, but uh, we require that the critical locus of W is proper. So that was the precise definition, okay? But roughly, 
you can just think of this as an affine uh, GIT quotient with a super potential such that uh, the requirements are really saying that this GIT quotient is a smooth uh, DM stack, not necessarily proper, usually not proper, but that the critical locus is proper. So this should just not be C stack. And this data, these GLSMs, as probably many people are aware, these specialize to, well, complete intersections. For if W is zero, uh, just the, the following spaces, for example, projective space, or more generally toric varieties. or Grassmannians, or more generally quiver varieties, et cetera. Okay. So uh, what's the goal? The goal is to produce an enumerative theory for GLSMs. That's the goal of this talk. And I I'm gonna tell you, uh, what that means and, and what goes into it and what the history of it is. So uh, you want an enumerative theory for GLSMs, which specializes to gromov witten theory. Uh, of complete intersections. in these affine GIT quotients, like the ones I just mentioned, or uh, which specializes to F, uh, von jarvis ruan witten theory uh, when G is finite. And in that case, we just have a portion. Any questions? No. Okay. All right, so uh, a basic example, maybe probably lots of people are comfortable with this. Uh, if you have C star acting on uh, CN plus two, uh, you take uh, spec of you have the projected variables and you add another variable called the P field sometimes. Uh, the, you have the usual weights on projective space and then you take minus minus uh, D on this extra variable. All right, so you could choose two, two different characters, theta plus would be the identity character and theta minus uh, is the inversion character, all right? So uh, if you choose this data and fix a homogeneous polynomial F of degree D, and then you set W to be P times F. Okay, so in the positive chamber, in the, with this positive stability theta, choice of theta, this is actually gonna give uh, the gromov witten theory of, uh, of this hypersurface and projective space. And with the uh, negative choice of theta, this inverted character, this gives the von jarvis ron witten theory of, uh, well, F on, on this quotient here, and, uh, on the coordinate ring uh, mod ZD. Okay. So uh, let me talk about uh, what it is we mean to construct uh, for these GLSMs. So what's the data uh, that goes into a cohomological field theory? Well, you have the state space, which is just a graded uh, C vector space. 
Big space. Created complex vector space. And uh, it has a pairing. Super commutative pairing. And a unit element. It's just a distinguished element. Uh, but it will satisfy certain properties. And then uh, the main data is a collection of maps. So for each G and each R and each D, uh, you get a map from the Rth tensor power of this graded vector space to the cohomology of the moduli space of uh, genus G R marked curves. So these are correlators. And um, so this data, which was the data in gromov witten theory was axiomatized by Konsevich and Manin. They, they showed that uh, in gromov witten theory, this collection of data, which uh, I'll run through what that is in the, in the next example, uh, satisfies a whole group of axioms, which I'm not going to go through, but uh, these axioms are essentially um, certain operations on moduli spaces uh, of, of curves. So for example, uh, if I take, if I want to glue two curves together, uh, there's, there's a map from the product of, of moduli spaces of two curves to, uh, to another moduli space, which takes those two curves and glues them. And uh, these axioms are saying that this data is natural with respect to all of those uh, natural maps between the moduli spaces. Okay. So uh, take, for example, the Gromov Witten theory of a smooth variety. So, uh, so we denote the moduli space of maps to Z. So this is the moduli space of maps from a curve to Z. Okay. So we denote it by this. All right, and then we want to build gromov witten theory. So we need to, we need, I need to give you a state space. So the state space is just the cohomology, say the Durham cohomology of Z. So I should say uh, this would be smooth compact. And then uh, the pairing is just integration. So now uh, using the Kunit formula, you have that the Rth tensor power is just the cohomology of Z to the R. Uh, you can pull back. So you have an evaluation map from this moduli space. You have R, a map to Z to the R based on taking this curve it has R markings. And so it uh, choosing each marking gives you a map to Z. So this evaluation map, you get an evaluation map from this moduli space to Z to the R, which just, uh, just takes this map and 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 takes the value of that map on the R marked points of this curve. Okay, so using that map, we can pull back to the cohomology. of mgrd of z 
of this moduli space of maps. And then when you cap, what's well known is that you cap with something called the virtual cycle. That lands you in the homology of this moduli space. Uh, then you can use the forgetful functor, which forgets the map here and just remembers the curve. So pushing forward along that forgetful map, you land in the homology of MGR. So now this is just usual moduli of curves. You don't have a map to Z anymore. And this is a nice, uh, smooth, proper Deline Mumford stack. So you have Poincare duality, which lands you back in the cohomology of MGR bar. And this map here is called the correlator. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to explain how this works uh, for, um, for GLSMs. So, uh, well, I need to give you what the data is. So the first thing I need to tell you is what's the state space? What is this uh, C graded vector space? So in general for GLSMs, this is the hypercohomology of uh, the cotangent, essentially the uh, exterior algebra on the cotangent bundle, but it's on the inertia space, inertia stack of your GIT quotient. And it's not just a uh, hypercohomology because we have a super potential. We have to uh, add this term to this complex. So this is what's called the twisted Hodge cohomology of the inertia stack. Let me take a second to explain uh, what these things are. So first, first of all, you have the inertia stack. This is uh, defined intrinsically as the fiber product of the, uh, of the two diagonal maps for the stack. Uh, but for a nice smooth balloon Mumford stack, it has this explicit form. So it just has a bunch of components. So this probably looks odd. But this, this means conjugacy classes. So uh, G is acting by conjugation. So G mod G is conjugacy classes. And for each conjugacy class, you take the fixed locus uh, of the semi-stable points and you quotient by the centralizer and you get a space. So, you, so this inertia stack is concretely this disjoint union of these pieces. Okay, so now what, whatever that is, I'm plugging it into here. So this actually has uh, a bunch of sum ends indexed by the conjugacy classes of G because I'm taking the cohomology of the complex for each of these, uh, for each of these components of this space. And on each of those sum ends, I'm taking um, this twisted Durand complex. Sorry, this twisted Hodge complex. So you have the usual um, uh, exterior powers of the cotangent bundle. You know, if you took if you took the p uh, cohomology of the qth wedge of this, you know, you get the HPQ of your manifold. Uh, but now, since we have a super potential, we add this, this term. So we add this differential. 
this differential is just wedging with d of w. d of w is an element of this algebra, so this is basically multiplication by dw. Okay. And uh, now what do you, you do? Well, this is a complex of sheaves on this space, right? So I wanna take its hypercohomology. So I need to resolve this by an asymptotic complex and then take the homology. Well, uh, probably if the most concrete way to think about this is you just take uh, the Dobo resolution. So if you take the Dobo resolution, um, then Concretely, you can think of this as the cohomology of the Dobo resolution. With uh, you just have Dell plus. Okay. So, you, so since we didn't have a D here, we lose Dell bar, but we still have Dell. And we have this okay. Anyway. So this is just uh, some general uh, vector space you can find. And it satisfies uh, the usual Kuna formula. You just take an arc power here. And then here you take the Tom Sebastian example. Okay, any questions? All right, I think I spent enough time on that. So uh, next, uh, I need to give you a pairing. So for the pairing, well, I need to set you up a bit. So it is gonna be just integration, but properly set up. So uh, if I have, a hypercohomology class with DW and another hypercohomology class with DV, then their wedge product is actually a hypercohomology class in uh, the Tom Sebastiani, sorry, in the sum of the two functions. Now this is just on X. Okay, so uh, you can see this, for example, you could wedge these as Dobo classes and, and they'll just land here. There's also an intrinsic way to define this one, wedge product uh, without modeling this hypercohomology. All right. So uh, the next thing you need is uh, this, inverse map. So because this thing is indexed, if I have this uh, a stack chi, uh, because this uh, inertia stack is indexed by uh, the conjugacy classes of G, you can send, uh, so, so here I'm denoting by chi is gonna be uh, E semi-stable theta. Okay, so for this inertia stack, given uh, an element in a component indexed by the conjugacy class G, we just send it to some root of unity times X. But in the component indexed by G inverse. Okay, so this is some kind of thing. Why do we do this? Well, first of all, what is this zeta? It's, uh, it's just a root of unity that uh, has multiplicity 2D. It's a, root, it's a 2D root of unity where D is the homogeneous uh, degree of W. So in other words, it's like a square root of the D root of unity of W. And what's the advantage of that? Well, it induces an isomorphism 
from the hypercohomology of this uh, inertia stack. So write this properly. Wedge dw to the same thing, but with a minus sign. Oh, space. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. So uh, we just set up here that if we wedge alpha and beta, we get a D of the sum. So this thing, if I wedge the two, if I wedged uh, a class and, all right, sorry. So this is defined as the integral of uh, alpha wedge in star beta. So uh, given alpha and beta both in dw, this guy is now in minus dw. Okay, so now when I wedge them together, this becomes a zero. And so this lies uh, in the, the cohomology with zero here, right? Which means this is usual cohomology and I can integrate. Okay, so now what's the unit? Um, so for this, uh, I need to define a couple things. So given this gamma, it has a map. Um, chi, what I'm going to call C star R. So this is the R charge action. And this group is an extension of the R charge at, of G by the R charge action. Okay. And now uh, W was homogeneous polynomial with respect to this, this, this action. Of degree D. And so um, give this weights are going to be uh, CI. So I want to assume that those weights are positive. Uh, okay. Hmm. Sorry, not positive, but non negative. And I also want to assume that if I take the fixed locus of the R charge action and quotient by G, that commutes with quotienting by G and taking the fixed and, and taking the R charge fixed locus. So let me comment on that. These GLS invariants aren't actually dependent on the choice of R, R charge action. So you, you lift this action. It's not dependent on the choice of that lift, but uh, in order to define this unit, you want your choice to have this compatibility. Okay. So given that, uh, we can define this unit as essentially it's the churn character of the fixed locus of the R charge action. So I'm going to write it like this. So Kai is just uh, filling in for, for my GIT quotient. So, so it's this space, which is equal to this space, is going here. And given that, I define 
a matrix factorization actually of W, but W by this condition uh, is trivial on the, sorry, I should also require, I don't want everything to be zero, so I want to require this. So by this condition, W restricts to zero on this fixed locus. And so this is now a factorization of W. So these two conditions assured that this is a factorization of W and that, the, and that what goes in is this space. Okay, and then there's something called the uh, virtual riemann roch theorem, which uh, this would be like the quantum K theory class, but in, for virtual riemann roch you want to do this uh, Todd correction. So you put here, you multiply this by the Todd class. Of called uh, the J fixed locus of this thing. Uh, relative to this C star R fixed locus. Now, J here is the intersection of these two groups. When you, when you look. Okay. So this is the thing, this is the unit. And what is this thing? This thing is lying inside, the churn character of this is actually lying inside our state space. So uh, this uh, churn character in this generality was defined by Kim and Polish Chuck. So this is a matrix factorization, and this is uh, its churn character is actually a twisted Hodge class. Any questions? No, I don't think so. All right. Okay, so we've got the state space, we've got the pairing and we've got the unit. So uh, the last thing to define is correlators. And for this, uh, this is really the whole body of the paper and would take uh, a very long time, but I, I give you the idea. So, uh, there's something called LG quasi maps. So uh, if I give you GLSM data, I have an analog of basically, you can think of these as maps to my GLSM. So maps from curves into my GS GLSM is this moduli space, okay, which I'll just call probably MLG, or oh, sorry, I'll just call it MGRD map. Now MGRD just means this huge moduli space of LG quasi maps, so curves into the GLSM data. And uh, if I have time, I'll say a little bit more about what those are. But right now, I just want to give you the idea. So uh, I'm going to embed this moduli space. So this moduli space is horribly smooth. Uh, sorry, sorry, horribly not smooth. Horribly singular, right? Okay. I don't know if horribly smooth is, is a thing. So uh, I want to embed this moduli space into something smooth. So I'll call that U, and it will also depend on the genus, uh, the number of markings and the degree. Okay. All right. So now this is something smooth. And I want it to, I want to create this embedding. So remember that I had two maps in the Gromov-Widen setting and also in this setting, I have these two maps too. 
I have an evaluation map, which actually lands in the inertia stack. All right. And I also have a forgetful map, which just lands in uh, the moduli space of curves. So if I'm going to embed this into a smooth space, I want it to extend these maps. Okay. So I embed it in such a way that it, it ex extends the evaluation and forgetful map. And now the virtual cycle is actually constructed here, but it's supported on this moduli space. All right, so the virtual cycle this is an element of MGRD. Sorry, the virtual cycle I'll denote by this notation. So M. GRD virtual. I mean, maybe this GRD could go in here. Anyway, it's just notation. And what is that? That thing is an element. So maybe if I have time, I'll tell you a little more about how, uh, how we construct this. But for now, you need to know that there's something called the virtual cycle, which is an element of the hypercohomology supported on this moduli space. And then here, you take the twisted Duran cohomology on this nice smooth space, UGRD. And here, you put wedge E of the pullback via the evaluation map. I'm out of space here, sorry. Uh, just bear with me. So I'm going to, this is just a complicated expression for W, basically. So what is W? It's, well, it's D of the pullback via the evaluation map of W sum, sum to the R. And so, um, oops. So um, this moduli space here, this is proper by a theorem of von Jarvis and Rouen. And so this is actually a cohomology class with compact support, all right? So what, what's the advantage of that? Well, because I have compact support here, I can take the push forward uh, along the, with compact support, All right? So I have this push forward because of this. Uh, I also have capping with my virtual class. And notice uh, my virtual class, there should be a minus sign here. So this is important. My virtual class has this potential, but with a minus sign, okay? So if I take a hypercohomology class here and I cap with this, I cancel this. I cancel this twisting. So really there's a zero here, but this is the usual 
uh, hypercohomology now of uh, of the of the Hodge complex, right? So this is usual HPQ numbers here. When we push forward, this is usual HPQ. And here's just the pullback along. So. Okay, so we use our Kunis formula. We pull back along this evaluation map. We land in this smooth space. We cap with this class. That gives us a, a compactly supported class and cancels the twisting. And then we push forward. And what's the result? This whole thing is our correlator. That's how we define our correlator. Any questions? All right, so yeah. I think I, I have just five more minutes. That's about right. Okay, so I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, tell you a little bit of the history of the results and, and some of the things we proved here. So uh, these uh, enumerative, uh, Invariants for GLSMs were first proved, were first constructed by Fon Jarvis and Ruan when G is finite, uh, and then Polish Czech and Weintraub constructed a purely algebraic version uh, where the virtual class. comes from a matrix factorization. And that's uh, the construction we generalized here. So we construct a matrix factorization whose churn character is, uh, is the virtual cycle. Uh, Kim and Lee also did, so this is also the G, this is all G finite case. And then uh, Kim and Lee also did the G finite case uh, using what's called post section localization. So, all of these were uh, what's called FJRW theory, uh, Von Jarvis, Ruan, Witten theory, the G finite case. Uh, then, Far Von Jarvis and Ruan followed up and they proved uh, oh, this for what's called narrow sectors. but for general GLSMs. So narrow sectors, this is, uh, this is taking the non-primitive cohomology. So this is only, um, the state space only uses um, the components which are pullbacks from the ambient GIT quotient. So for example, this works for projective spaces and, um, you know, Grassmannians, torque varieties, these kinds of things, but not with not not the complete intersection part. So not the cohomology that's not coming from the pullback of that torque variety or that Grassmannian or whatever it is. All right. So then uh together with Chiacan, Fontenine, uh Guerra, Kim, and Shoemaker, uh, we constructed these invariants for convex hybrid models. models, and then maybe all sectors. And finally, uh, with Pumshig, we completed the general case. All right. So let me uh, state some of the results about this. And then I'll be done. I'll finish there. So uh, the theorem with uh, Unit, uh, Jeremy, and Mark, and Bumshig, the main theorem was that enumerative invariants for convex hybrid models specialize to uh, 
Gromov of, of FJRW theory. Now that maybe that's not the main theorem, but I, this is part, I have space here. So this is actually basically by construction that this uh, construction just generalized the construction of uh, Polish Czech and Vantra. But then there's an and, gromov witten theory. And this was uh, far less obvious. We had to, this was actually some work, but there's a caveat using uh, the cosection localized virtual cycle. So that is strictly speaking what we proved, and it wasn't known at that time that the cosection localized virtual cycle agreed with the Baron Fontecki cycle. So uh, Bumshig and uh, Junsuf O oh, went on and proved this. So actually, uh, this caveat can be removed. The cosection localized virtual cycle agrees with the usual definition of Gromov Witten theory up to sign, agrees with the Theron Fonteki virtual cycle up to sign. Okay. So uh, then uh, we generalized this construction. Uh, and actually, we also proved that this general construction is general invariants uh, form a cohomological field theory. So we verified all of the axioms which uh, I. I, I named but didn't uh, detail for you for uh, these invariants which we constructed. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, so, any questions from the audience? I know it's late. But... Is that is um, is that progress? Uh, I mean. I see there is a lot of uh, progress in the theory and uh, that you can relate these things to each other, but can you uh, calculate them? Uh, yeah, sorry, it's a little hard to hear you, but uh, you're asking me if I can calculate them? Yeah, so basically. So if you're asking me if I can calculate them, uh, I think the answer is <laughs> That's what no. I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you ask, Melissa Liu, if she can calculate them, I think the answer may be yes in, in some cases. So she, she's calculated these uh, in the Abelian case uh, using this uh, Plesser-Morrison construction. So there, uh, some of these moduli spaces are completely toric. Right. And then everything and can then be- And then you computed. use toric localization or something to do that. See, sorry, I can you, you use toric localization to do this or how, or how you uh, the, it, I, so there's no yeah there's no c star localization theorem at the moment for these okay uh but i think that's maybe something melissa's working on uh I, I tell you that she can calculate this in certain examples uh and um has shown that you know they analytically continue when you uh, vary the stability, for example. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, any other questions? So um, does your construction give any insight into um, what should happen on the other side of a mirror correspondence? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, that's a great question. Uh, In terms of yeah, like uh, what should be the B theory? I I'm, I actually I don't know the answer to that. For, That's the, for the next ten years, yeah, hmm. like cyto Diventhal theory or whatever it is for in this yeah. generality. I, I I don't know. Yeah, but just given that you have what 
really seems to be the right generalization for JLSMs. So it would be very natural to look through them. Right. Well, right. You, you certainly, uh, I mean, I, I don't even think we know how, you know, how to mirror general GLSMs. Maybe I'm lying, but if G is an arbitrary, you know, non-abelian thing, I mean, maybe in the toric setting, you know, you know, but for arbitrary G, uh, what is the, even the mirror? And then, yeah. Exactly. What's the what's the theory for arbitrary GLS? And maybe maybe the audience knows better than I do. <laughs> okay, well let's uh, thank David again. Okay. And and uh, David, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you.